All right, we're back. Now you're probably wondering, with no trades going on, with no big information on the rumor mill, what could Yankee Sam 11 possibly be coming back to talk about today? Could it be that he just graduated college, does not have a job, and is just a little bored? Hell no! I make videos because I like making videos, not because I'm getting bored. But anyways, I'm here to start this two-part series about what the Padres should do with the remainder of this offseason. If you remember from my previous video about how the Padres still have enough money to sign Trevor Bauer, I said the Padres still have $38 million to spend this offseason before they hit the luxury tax. And guess what? I was wrong. In my meticulous calculations, I had totally forgotten that the Padres had signed Ha Sung Kim, which is dumb because I made a video about that too. The rumor is his contract's for four years and it's between 25 to 29 million dollars, somewhere in that range. Let's pretend it's 28 just to make the math easier. That makes his annual salary around 7 million dollars per year. And if you subtract that from 38, what do you get kids? 31 million dollars. That's how much the Potteries have to spend. And today, we're not going to talk about free agents but we're gonna talk about the one trade the Padres need to make to win the World Series. Straight off the bat, I'm gonna say it, but the Padres need to trade CJ Abrams. If you don't know who he is by now, you're clearly not a Padres fan, but secondly, he is the number two prospect in the Padres organization, and he's a shortstop, middle infielder, but clearly that's a problem because the Padres have some guy named Fernando Tatis Jr. playing shortstop. The theory is that Abrams can move to second, but the Padres also got Cronenworth there, and also Kim can play second, and maybe their contracts will be done by the time Abrams is ready to hit the MLB. But if that's not the case, then Abrams will have to move to the outfield. But anyways, all this is to say that I don't think there is a clear position for him in the Padres' long-term future. And to be quite honest, I don't think he's all that. Boo, boo, boo. Can't you guys just leave a nice comment for once? Like, put your personal opinions aside and do your research. Simple as that. If you watch him swing, he kind of reminds me of D. Gordon, a left-handed hitting shortstop who's really fast, really skinny. They have the same body type. Everything just seems to scream D. Gordon. Even if you look at their stats, Abrams has only played in one year of minor league ball, and his stats are pretty similar to D. Gordon's first year of minor league ball. I'll admit, despite what it may seem, Abrams actually does hit for more power than D. Gordon, even though Abrams is quite possibly just as skinny as D. Gordon. And by no means am I calling D. Gordon a scrub. He's a two-time all-star and that's pretty solid. But would I trade a two-time all-star for a chance to win a World Series? Hell yeah! I'm from San Diego, I haven't seen a championship from any sports team, not just in my life, but ever. Even while I was in the womb, I've never seen a championship. This is depressing. So trade Abrams, Abrams gotta go. But who do I think we should get in return? Now there are a lot of names on the trade market right now. JD Martinez, Wilson Contreras, Nolan Arenado. But I got a different trade in mind. I would like to see the Padres trade Abrams for Sonny Gray and Luke Sims. Here's why I think the trade makes sense for both sides. First, for the Cincinnati Reds, I think they're trying to get contracts off their books. It doesn't look like they're gonna re-sign Trevor Bauer, and I don't think they're in a serious championship chase right now. They got some real good prospects like Luis Castillo, and if they build their team right, I think they can be really competitive in three years. But you just saw, they traded Rysel Iglesias, their closer, to the Angels, and I know this plenty from being a Padres fan. If you're trading a bullpen piece, you're not seriously trying to compete. So why not take one of the best prospects in America and also free up your books so that you can compete in the future? I think the Reds could be enticed to make this trade. Now from the Padres' perspective, this is why the trade makes sense. From the outside, it doesn't seem like Sonny Gray had the best season last season, but I would argue he did. His 3.7 ERA wasn't all that, but let's look at a stat called Fielding Independent Pitching, FIP. FIP basically refers to how good a pitcher would have been if they had the most average defense out there. It's on a similar scale to ERA, so we can kind of treat it like that. 
Sonny Gray's FIP in 2020 was 3.05, significantly lower than his ERA. This suggests that Sonny Gray overperformed his ERA. He did better than his ERA said he did. If we put his FIP into perspective, this was the 13th best FIP in the MLB in 2020. He was the 13th best pitcher according to this statistic. This was the best FIP that Sonny Gray has put up in his career. And some of his other stats, like if you look at his K per 9, 11.6, that's his career high. I'm telling you, Sonny Gray in many regards had a career year in 2020, even though his ERA did not reflect it. Can you imagine a starting rotation with you Darvish, Blake Snell, Denelson Lamette, and Sonny Gray as your top four. It's, a, it's actually a wrap. But let me continue by explaining why this even makes sense financially for the Padres. Sonny Gray has a club option in 2023. That's the year that Clevenger becomes a free agent, and Will Myers also has a team option that year. What this means is that that year, 2023, the Padres will have money to spend. I'm pretty sure most of that money is going to go towards paying Fernando Tatis. Basically, the Padres championship window right now ends in 2022. And with Sonny Gray coming off the books after 2022, the timeline just works perfectly. But what about that other guy, Luke Sims? Now Sims was once a top prospect, but he definitely underperformed uh, all the way through the minors. And even when he came up to the majors, he did not perform too well. But last season, after being a starter his whole life, he transitioned into the bullpen and became a beast. But le let me give you some numbers to put that into perspective. Opponents expected batting average, 99th percentile. Opponents expected WOBA, 98th percentile. Opponents expected slugging, 99th percentile. Opponents barrel percentage, 98th percentile. In many ways, this was one of the best pitchers in the MLB last season. He's producing soft contact out of the bullpen, and that's what the Padres need. Even if Sims never turns out to be the starting pitcher that people thought he would be, Sims can be a solid, solid bullpen arm for the San Diego Padres. Now he's undergoing arbitration right now. We don't know how much his salary will be in 2021, but I'm gonna guess around three million. That's around what most young relief pitchers get during arbitration. And with that three million, if you add that to Sonny Gray's 2021 contract of 10.2 million, you get 13.2 million. I'm just doing the math for you guys so you don't have to think about it. If you subtract that from the 31 million dollars that the Padres have left to spend, you get 17.8 million dollars left. And what should the Padres do with that money? Tune in next time to Yankee Sam 11 to find out. And that folks is how you get the views. Leave a comment down below about what you think about this trade and who the Padres should trade for during the offseason.